Hi guys, welcome back. Are you ready to brew some potions with me? Okay, so we're not brewing roll potions, but we are making gorgeous apothecary jars. So hopefully I'll be able to inspire you to create something absolutely amazing to decorate your house with this Halloween. If you're new here, my name's Faith and this is Willoughby DIY. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is prepare whatever bottles you picked up from the store to be painted. I grabbed these from Target, but most of my bottles came from the Dollar Tree. Just removing these labels. These are pretty stubborn, so I ended up using Goo Gone to remove them. And then I also got this bottle that I guess was left over from summer decor at the Dollar Tree, but I tried to remove these words using acetone. It wasn't working. So I just grabbed this craft knife, scraped it all off, and it was good to go. The most important step after removing all your labels is going to be rubbing alcohol. Clean all of your bottles, all the surface of your bottles with rubbing alcohol to remove any dirt or finger oils, anything that might interfere with painting. My first technique is just making colored glass, essentially. For some of the, my bottles, I'm gonna make them amber. And so to do that, I'm going to use food coloring. Some red and green and a little yellow is what you'll really need. I only had the red and green I had left over from last Christmas, but it's okay. I used some yellow paint instead of yellow food coloring. Just gonna mix the, a little bit of those into a lot of Mod Podge and a little bit of water to thin it out. Keep mixing and adding colors until I get the color I want. I test this color out on a small bottle and let it dry to make sure it was pretty much what I wanted. And once I was happy with it, it was time to apply it to some bottles. My daughter, you could see her helping me there at the bottom right. She wanted to help with this project. Problem was she got bored pretty quickly. <laughs> so she really only painted this one bottle and some corks, but I appreciate the help nonetheless. I only applied one layer of this tinted Mod Podge on my bottles and I let it completely dry before I did anything else to them. I applied it to these Target bottles, the Dollar Tree Tall bottle, and then I watered it down some more and added it to these little small like glass vial bottles that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Pour that mixture into your bottle, swirl it around, and dump out the excess. I set them upside down on a paper towel to drip dry, and I did three of those tall ones and four of the short ones. And I also made some green tint using Mod Podge, a little water, and just some green food coloring. I do add a bit of black paint to it to tone it down a bit because it was really green. <laughs> and then I'm gonna apply it to that uh, beach bottle, the one I scraped the words off of. I'm gonna apply that mixture right onto that using a Dollar Tree makeup applicator. You can see when you first put it on, it kind of leaves that little squarish indentions, but once you get your first coat on, just take your sponge and go directly over that. Just pat those lines out with the sponge and it'll look absolutely amazing. This ends up being my favorite bottle, hands down. For this bottle, or for this jar and some other ones, I just dirtied them up using paint. So this is me just dry brushing and a stippling motion onto this jar with burnt umber, and I do go in and add some black as well. So we're just going into those cracks and crevices and up at the rim of the jar and just dirtying it up, really. Once I got the brown on, I'm gonna add a little water to some black paint and a small brush and, and use it to add a bit more depth and detail to this jar. I don't recommend that you do it in a stippling motion like this. It will pull your first layer of paint up, so do it like this right here. Take the side of your brush and just tap the side of it onto the jar. You can use your finger to pat it out and soften that color up a bit and then just let it dry and you're good to go. These are a couple of the plastic jars that you can get from the Dollar Tree. And I'm using this makeup applicator to do the same technique using the paint and just dirtying it up. This one was mostly brown with a bit of black. And then the other one is mostly black and I concentrated it on those raised parts of the jar. And I just kept layering it until I was happy with it. For this beautiful jar that I got from the Dollar Tree, we're gonna do some textured paint with baking soda and warm buff. So I just mixed this up till it was about this consistency. And we're just gonna put it on our jar and the lid. The best advice I can give you for this sort of textured paint is put a ton of it on your brush and just gently smooth it over the surface. The less you have to press and work it, the better it looks. Make sure your brush strokes are all in the same direction. After that first layer dried, I did go in 
and add a second coat. And even though I put my paint mixture in a Ziploc bag, it still dried out a bit. I just added a bit of water to it so it would be a little bit easier to work and carefully, gently added my second coat to the jar. I let that dry for a few hours before distressing the jar a bit using burnt umber. I'm using a paintbrush to apply the paint directly onto the jar and the lid and immediately taking a makeup applicator sponge and smushing it and smudging it and working it around to dirty that jar up and make it look gorgeous. enjoying this video don't forget to hit that like button and of course we've got to do the tops right corks lids all that good stuff so for this lid I'm taking this bead that came in a jewelry making kit my sister gave me I'm using hot glue to stick it on the top of a cork then I'm going to take some pre-measured jute twine and paint it with some acrylic brushed gold paint it's a bit messy but totally worth it once it dries, I'm going to hot glue it onto the cork on the side of it, just where the cork, when you stick the cork in the bottle, it'll sit right above that. We're going to wrap it around, and then once you get to the top, start hot gluing from then on. You're going to need to put hot glue in each part to make sure you're covering the entirety of that cork all the way right up against the bead. Because my fingers kept touching the hot glue while it was wet, it started having like this white look to it so I just took a lighter and hit those glue pieces with it and it made those clear again. Another similar way you could do these is take a cap from another bottle. This one is from a Dollar Tree bottle. I just removed the plastic off that little end piece and painted it gold and then I took a hobby knife and hollowed out the cork that came with that tall bottle so that that would fit down into it and now I'm just going to hot glue that right into the top of that cork. And to finish it up, I'm just going to paint the cork the same gold color I painted the top. For the next two lids, it's pretty simple. This one, I'm just going to hot glue a bead on the top of that lid, fill the hole of the bead with hot glue. For this one, I'm taking the head off of this little skeleton from some old Halloween decor and gluing that right to the to the top of that lid. Then we're going to spray paint. I've got these two Rust-Oleum spray paints, this flat soft iron and hammered copper. For this one, I painted it with the copper and immediately painted over it with the iron and then took a stick and kind of tapped the flat part of the lid. <laughs> this one just has two coats of the copper. And I also took these little lids for the glass Dollar Tree glass vials and some of them I painted them copper to begin with and some iron to begin with and once they dried I dusted them with the opposing color and some I left alone. And then we're also going to go ahead with my acrylic metallic paints and add a little bit just a tiny bit more detail to these. So a couple of them that were more copper looking I added just a tiny bit of gold metallic paint and some that are a little more iron looking I added a little bit of silver paint. And the hole in the bead on this one was it flattened out when it got spray painted so I filled it up again and then took some silver metallic paint and covered it up and to make sure everything was still seamless and cohesive I added a little bit of that paint all over the lid. For this lid you're going to need one of these 2.4 inch foam balls that come in a three pack from the Dollar Tree. Cut it in half and glue one half of it to the top of that lid. Ignore the copper lid, I completely changed that. That's the skull head one now. Once that's on there, you can start adding hot glue. Be careful, this will make your lid very hot. I add some swirlies to the foam part and then just crazy messy lines of hot glue all around the rim. And once it was dry, I took some black paint and painted it completely black all over and it has amazing texture. Just use tons of paint on your brush and it'll be easy to get down into those little holes in the foam. Once that dried, I took some metallic gold paint and a makeup applicator and applied that to the raised parts to add more detail and depth to this, to this lid. And then if you got corks for your lids and you want them to look a little bit more dingy and dirty, just grab some paint. Use burnt umber and territorial beige and just dry brush them on. You could fill your bottles with anything you want. You could use craft supplies like this jewelry thread 
Um, I don't know who gave this to me, but I've had it forever. I just cut some pieces to look like cat whiskers, black cat whiskers. I also took some of this spider web decoration from the Dollar Tree, shoved it down in a bottle. Some tube confetti, also from the Dollar Tree. Spanish moss, glass beads, and even some wood shavings. My husband's been doing woodworking, so I grabbed a few of those that he had lying on the ground outside. And even some of that white creepy cloth that you see on my table there, just snipped a piece off, shoved it down in a bottle. You can also buy some from the Dollar Tree or wherever you want. I grabbed these eyeballs from the Dollar Tree, red and yellow ones, threw those in this jar. Some of these sparkly little foam skulls from the Dollar Tree, fairy skulls. And this one is actually a Christmas item, and they're just these little foam, yellow, glittery balls. I don't know. <laughs> but they look like mustard seed, which coincidentally is Eye of Newt. And also these fingernail tips that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. My daughter's been really obsessed with the glue-on nails lately, and I grabbed these, not really paying attention to what they were. Didn't realize they were just tips until I got home, so they're going into a bottle too. Just a handful of nails. You can make stuff that are liquids as well. I took these little glass bottles that you can get from Dollar Tree, the ones with the corks, put some water in them, and then for some I added food coloring, and for others I actually just added a little paint. Super simple and very customizable because you can use whatever colors you got. Raid your pantry, guys. You can find tons of things that you can use from there, like brown rice, herbs, or even spices like these ground cloves here, or baking powder, cocoa powder, peppercorns. I also use salt because it looks kind of like arsenic, and this is going to be my bottle of arsenic. <laughs> and of course, if you want, you can label them. I'm definitely labeling mine, and if you want, you can use your Cricut or just print some out, but I made mine by hand. You pick out your papers. I'm using parchment paper, these Dollar Tree paper pack. You could use cardstock, or you could use construction paper, or even scrapbooking paper, whatever you like. Decorate them with rub-on transfers. I grabbed a few from the Dollar Tree, and just make whatever you want. Layer different shapes on top of one another. Add handwritten words to it. You see this here. I'm actually going to add to that green paper you see above it. And both of those papers come in the Dollar Tree paper pack. I wrote things on there by hand and also used rub on transfers, stencils. Then you can attach these to your jars. Either punch holes and add with a string or a ribbon. Or you can use some spray adhesive or Mod Podge or double-sided tape to add them directly to your jars and bottles. If you got rub-on transfers, you can put those right onto the bottle themselves. This was definitely one of my favorite videos to make. I had so, so much fun. Now that arsenic bottle was my absolute favorite bottle of all of these. It is just so beautiful and just, just awesome. I love it so much. Let me know down in the comments which one of these bottles is your favorite. I hope this inspires you guys to go out and put together your very own apothecary cupboard. If you do, please tag me on Instagram or Pinterest or wherever you post it and show me what you guys make. I would love to see it. Also, let me know what you're filling your bottles with. I'd love to know what you guys think would be cool in them. And hey, if you don't want to, you don't even have to fill them. The jar I did with the textured paint that looks like a cer old ceramic jar, yeah, that went completely empty. <laughs> but that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you tap that like button. And if you want to see more from me, make sure you subscribe. Tap that notification bell. Hope you all have a spectacularly spooky day. And I'll see you all next time.